Life Club with Tashima Jones, the podcast, brought to you by Tashima Jones Media. Keep in mind that this content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Welcome to another episode of Life Club with me, Tashima Jones. Today, we will be speaking about overachieving and its association with fear. While most may deem it admirable for a person to work diligently in their profession and even in being reliable in their personal life, oftentimes the underlying driving force of that diligence is fear. If you had a chance to check out the latest quick read article on TashimaJones.com, you have become more aware of how overthinking, overreacting, and being overwhelmed are closely linked to one another. Let's discover ways to rise above overachieving by scaling back in order to enjoy your personal and professional life a bit more every day. As always, when we know the definition of a thing, we are better equipped to using it properly. Up first, we have overachiever. For the purposes of this session, an overachiever is defined as an individual with an intense desire to succeed, so much so that they aim to exert more energy than they have the capacity to give. Up next is fear. Fear is associated with timidity, dread, and the belief that one is vulnerable to loss or danger. Our third term is hyper-responsibility, which is the belief that one must care for, protect, and provide for those around them, oftentimes at the expense of their own well-being. And last but not least, we have self-esteem. Self-esteem is the ability to recognize your personal worth. It involves the concept you have about yourself and the value you see in who you are. Again, overachieving is the act of going beyond your capacity to give in order to reach a level of success. For starters, there is nothing wrong with desiring to be your best self or even accomplishing goals. The thing about overachieving is what's fueling that desire as well as obtaining the desire at the expense of your health. And this can be mentally, physically, emotionally, and even spiritually. It also includes jeopardizing relationships for the sake of success. When fear and low self-esteem are present, many tend to go into flight, fawn, or fight mode. They either take flight and run away, which can be seen in avoidance. They may fawn, typically seen in people pleasing, or they may fight. And here is where overachievers tend to show up. Overachievers are oftentimes fighting for the following things. They fight to never go back to their perceived story of origin. They fight to reclaim power they believe they lost or never believed they actually had. And they fight to be seen and heard. They are fighting daily to have a sense of self-worth. They fight to escape what they fear, be it poverty, abandonment, and other traumatic ghosts of the past. They fight to never feel small or powerless ever again. They're often fighting to prove their worth, and these quote unquote motivators aren't actually motivating the individual they are actually keeping the individual stuck on a hamster wheel because what's being achieved can never truly resolve the inner turmoil they experience external accomplishments can't fulfill internal voids and this is the plight of the overachiever constantly collecting trinkets, going up the ladder of success outwardly, yet internally they find themselves unfulfilled. The other factor that plays a role in overextending oneself is actually out of habit. If a person was responsible for caring for their siblings or even their parents at a young age, 
there may be a tendency to feel more responsible than necessary in adulthood. They may cuddle their children longer than most. They may enable their partners in romantic relationships. Oftentimes, they take on way too much at work or in group settings, and they have a hard time with saying no. When hyper-responsibility is present, the individual tends to feel uncomfortable tending to their own needs. They may carry an unspoken sense of obligation to others and have trouble with setting boundaries. In other words, self-care will be seen as being selfish in their eyes and taking a rest will be misinterpreted as being lazy. Overachievers tend to have a distorted sense of what they can do and what they are responsible for. They also fear delegating responsibilities and asking for help. A common phrase and belief is that they don't want to be a burden to others. This is largely due to the fact that they may have never had someone stable enough that they could actually depend on. So if things get tough, they find themselves going into overdrive only to experience burnout. So how does one simmer down without breaking down and simply be an achiever? Meaning they show up as their best selves to accomplish what they have the capacity to accomplish all while being fulfilled. A major key is managing the unresolved conflicts within regarding fear, self-worth, and hyper-responsibility. Getting to the root of why you push yourself can reveal what you're really in search of. With that being said, here is your life work. Based on this session, set aside at least 10 minutes and begin to reflect on and consider the following. Are you an overachiever? Is your self-worth, again, how you see and value yourself based on performance and external possessions? Does performance impact your emotions, self-perception, and how you show up in the world? Do you work harder out of fear of previous life events or to prove yourself to other people? Were you expected to take care of yourself and others at a young age or look to as the one to lead and manage those around you. Would you say you are motivated by fear or oftentimes expected to not make a mistake? Do you have the habit of not asking for help and a difficulty with setting and sticking to boundaries? Have you achieved most of what you desired yet still feel unfulfilled? Do you experience burnout or restlessness on a regular basis but you feel as if you haven't accomplished much. Are you anxious about resting and taking a day to simply relax? Are you able to identify moments in time when you made a pact with yourself to sacrifice rest in order to achieve? Do you have more than what you can realistically accomplish in a day on your to-do list for the day? Do you get frustrated when you don't complete your to-do list on the same day? And when you do complete your to-do list, do you add on more tasks or take the time to simply relax? As you reflect on the questions above, consider healthy resolutions to the fear and hypersensitivity and begin to value yourself within by recognizing that you are truly priceless and no amount of work or material wealth can change that. Be sure to journal your experience and feel free to share that experience in the comment section. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Life Club with me, Tashima Jones. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you were here with me. And for that, I am truly grateful. Be sure to share and subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you are tuning in from and find me on YouTube at Tashima Jones Media for our one-minute meditations and other video content. 
you're also invited to visit tashimajones.com for life coaching sessions, books, articles, courses, and free downloads. Until next time, remember your greatness. Talk soon.